I recently got this question asking if herbs are enough or if antibiotics are necessary. So let's talk about it. All right, we've got herbs versus antibiotics. Round one, fight. <laughs> no, but guys, let's start off by talking about antibiotics. Now, antibiotics are an insanely powerful and amazing invention for humans. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, think back to 1941. We have data from the Boston Hospital that shows that in 1941, about 82% of patients that had infections died from infections. Okay, compare that to today, and that number has fallen well below 1% of people with infections die from infections because we have antibiotics in order to treat those infections, and it just doesn't affect the human population in the same way that it did in the 40s, which is amazing. I mean, could you ask for anything better? So antibiotics absolutely changed our lives and changed the way things work in the medical community and for the health of human beings in general. But let's look at it in the frame of Lyme disease. In order to understand more, let's think about how antibiotics work. Well, they work by blocking vital processes that happen within bacteria, okay? And without getting too deep into how all that works and too nerdy because you might fall asleep on me, just know that it blocks bacteria from doing the things that they're good at and the things that cause them to survive so that our immune system can then come in and fight the battle and win the war that they're already battling. It's kind of like if there was a war being fought and then one side was all given an illness all at the same time so that the other side could easily come in and wipe them out. That's how you can think about antibiotics. They basically allow our body's immune system to gain the edge, gain the advantage in the fight and start to win the battle. However, antibiotics cannot tell the difference between a healthy bacteria and a harmful bacteria. According to antibiotics, all bacteria are created equal. This is where the problems start to occur because antibiotics don't just make one side of the war sick, they make both sides of the war sick, right? They stop the vital processes in both types of bacteria, the healthy bacteria, and the harmful bacteria. Now to give you an idea, the human body has about 50 trillion healthy bacteria in our gut alone. These healthy bacteria have a ton of different purposes from breaking down food to producing energy. And in recent years, they actually linked healthy gut bacteria to our mental attitude and our happiness. Look, healthy bacteria are not important to us. They are us. really important to realize this and killing these bacteria can have extremely extremely serious consequences for example the cdc reports that about 35,000 people die every year from infections that can be tied back to antibiotics this stat was absolutely eye-opening and shocking to me but if you're anything like me you did the math and you realize that that's only 0.01 percent of people who took antibiotics. 251.1 million prescriptions were written for antibiotics in 2019, according to the CDC. So now you're probably wondering, is it worth the risk to risk being the 0.01% of people who die from antibiotics, but also have the ability to kill bacteria? And that's a fair question. But like every good science lover, I'm going to answer your question with another question. And that question is, does it work for Lyme disease? Do antibiotics actually kill Lyme bacteria, Borrelia burgdorferi, and its co-infections? And I've researched this extensively and for many years, and I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that for an acute case of Lyme disease, antibiotics work wonders. They work very, very well. Now, acute is the key word here. So what does acute mean? Well, it means if you get lucky and you show the bullseye rash within one week of getting bitten by a tick. You show that line, that, that rash right away and you go to the doctor and they give you antibiotics, ding, 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 you got lucky my friend, you will kill those Lyme bacteria probably 90% of the time if you use the antibiotics. So don't be afraid to take antibiotics if that's you. Everyone else, this is where the problems start to happen. So with an acute case, you are golden. You can take antibiotics and it will help you a ton. But from my experience, and I've talked to many, many thousands of people that have had Lyme disease, and from my experience, those 
cases are actually more rare than you might think. Of all of the people that I talked to and worked with that have Lyme disease, all of them either A, don't remember being bitten by a tick or B, remember being bitten by a tick, but it was years and years and years ago. I'll use myself as an example. I remember being bitten by a tick when I was five years old. My mom found a tick on the back of my neck. Now I didn't see any Lyme disease symptoms until I was 24 years old, almost 20 years later. Now to say that I could take antibiotics and it's an acute case of Lyme disease when I got symptoms 20 years later is absolutely false. By that point in the journey, the microbes have really settled in. They've started having a family, they have a job, they go to work every day, they come home and rest at night. Now, not really. What that means for microbes is they drill into our endothelial cells, they steal nutrients from us, they, go, they hide in deep, dark places in our tissues, and they reproduce and create more microbes. And that's really all any organism wants to do is have a place to live, be able to reproduce and have food. And they get all three of those things by hiding inside of our body and they're stealth microbes. So they kind of peruse around. They don't really you know, like attack us real hard, but they do latch on and steal our nutrients. And that's what causes most of the symptoms with Lyme disease. Now, when we drop antibiotics on them at this point, it almost never works. Imagine dropping a nuclear bomb on a town where everybody lives underground, where everybody is hiding away underground and they're not gonna be seen. Nobody's seen them in years and years and years. They're just there minding their own business underground in their own bunker with their own food, repopulating, having kids and you try to drop a bomb on them, but they're so far underground that it doesn't affect them at all. That's what's happening with Lyme disease in its late stages. See, the Lyme microbes have a ton of different tricks that help them go undetected by the immune system and help them avoid antibiotic attacks. One of those tricks is that they can insist in a, into a tiny itty bitty little ball and kind of just wait for the attack to end. And normally they're stretched out in a spiral kind of zigzag pattern type looking thing. I'll show you a picture. And then when they sense that they're in danger, they can insist into a tiny little ball and just wait for it to end. When the attack ends, they roll back out into their full form, drill back into endothelial cells, steal collagen, take our nutrients, and reproduce some more. Look, the data shows that those with chronic Lyme disease or late stage Lyme disease do not respond to antibiotic treatment. It just doesn't work well. This ends up making antibiotics actually dangerous to people who are in this stage of Lyme disease. Because again, antibiotics are not risk-free. They have a risk of death tied to them. The worst thing on earth, my biggest pet peeve, is seeing a doctor prescribe long-term antibiotics to a person that's in late stage Lyme disease. This can be completely detrimental to their health. Not only that, but it also affects depression, mood, and it can completely just destroy people. I've seen it lead to suicide. I've seen it lead down a deep, dark path that you do not want to go down. So that's how antibiotics work. And that's how they work specifically when it comes to Lyme disease. But what about herbs? Standing in the red corner, we have herbs, right? And herbs are powerful, filled with phytochemicals, phytonutrients, and just a ton of different compounds that really help the human body thrive. Herbs are so powerful and they've always been a part of the human civilization. They're just plants that grow outside and that were part of our ancestors foraging diet. See, the thing is plants need to protect themselves from microbes, from bugs and insects, and they need to protect themselves out there in the wild. So they create things like compounds and phytochemicals that kill the things that try to destroy them, that kill bacteria, viruses, microbes, bugs, etc. And when we eat them, we actually get the benefits of those compounds inside our body which is very, very interesting. But here's the thing, the food that we eat, whether it's blueberries that you buy at the store or an apple, these foods are not the same as they were you know, hundreds of years ago. Today, they've been domesticated. They've been created on a mass scale so that we can provide more food to more people, which is a great 
thing, but it did come with the detriment of reducing the antioxidants, reducing phytochemicals in the plants, reducing all of these really powerful compounds that we want our body to have. They've all been reduced down to the least possible amount, especially when you add in the, the use of insecticides and pesticides that do all the killing of bugs and microbes for the plant. The plant has no need to make these compounds anymore. So our regular grocery store food still has those compounds. I'm talking about whole plant-based foods like blueberries, apples, kale, spinach. These foods are healthy and amazing and you need them in your life. As a nutritionist, I care about them deeply and I push hard to get my clients to eat a nutritious, healthy, whole foods diet, especially if they're healing from Lyme disease. But they just don't have the same things as they used to back hundreds of years ago when we were eating those healthy foods. And Back hundreds of years ago, we also ate a lot more herbs. It was just part of a regular foraging diet. You could just find them anywhere. They were part of the greens that we ate every day. Today, people don't eat herbs as much, but the thing is, herbs are still wild. They're not domesticated. They're not covered in pesticides. They're not covered in herbicide and insecticides. And they're not brought inside and, and, and grown in a factory type setting in order to mass produce. They still live in the wild, hence they still have those compounds that protect them from other insects, microbes, bacteria, viruses, etc. That's what makes herbs one of the most powerful things that anybody could add into their diet and into their life at any point. If you want to increase your phytonutrients and your, the antibacterial properties, the anti-inflammatory properties in your body, you need herbs. And not only that, but they also provide a host of other beneficial factors when it comes to Lyme disease. They can rebuild and repair cells. They can modulate the immune system. They can protect major organ systems. They have natural antibacterial agents. They help reduce inflammation and so much more. I don't have enough fingers on my hands to count all of the things that herbs help you with, especially when it comes to Lyme disease. They're just really important and powerful. And the thing is, they're not just for Lyme disease. Personally, I haven't had any Lyme symptoms in over six years, and I still take herbs every single day for different purposes, depending on what I'm working on and, and you know my blood test results and my personal experiences in life. So I still take herbs every single day because I know that my body loves those phytonutrients. It loves all those powerful compounds that can protect my organs, that can just continually fill my body with antibacterial properties. Why wouldn't we want that? Oh, and by the way, as long as you don't have an allergic reaction to an herb, you can take as much as you possibly want without risking or worrying about death or illness from the herbs. I haven't found one single story about herbs killing anyone ever in all of human history where we've been using herbs the entire time. Just to live in our everyday food. So there you go, that's the truth. That's the difference between herbs and antibiotics. Isn't that awesome? And you know what the coolest part is? The coolest part is you don't have to choose between herbs and antibiotics. It's completely safe to take both of them at the same time. That way you cover your bases and you get the best of both worlds. However, be careful because like I mentioned, antibiotics can be harmful if taken in too large of doses or too long length of time. And here's an important note, always talk to your doctor before taking something new or trying some kind of herb or trying some kind of antibiotic. Don't just go out there and try this on your own. You want to do this in a supervised setting with the understanding of a doctor or an herbalist or somebody that can help you. So I just shared with you how I personally process the decision for taking antibiotics versus taking herbs. And me personally, I didn't take antibiotics at all when I was going through my Lyme disease journey. So when my clients come and ask if they should use herbs or antibiotics, I present to them exactly what I just presented to you. After all, it's our personal responsibility to take care of our own bodies. So this decision is up to you. Don't let other people force you in any specific direction. Remember, you are the captain of this ship. You are control of your body 
and your health. If you got this far in the video, thank you so much. And go to LymeDiseaseWars.com right now to sign up for our free newsletter. We'll give you a free ebook. We also got a brand new product that's launching in the coming days and weeks. I think we're going to launch at the end of February. So sign up to the list right now. Go to LymeDiseaseWars.com and sign up today. I can't wait to see you there where I'll send you everything I've ever learned about Lyme disease. Talk soon. Bye-bye.